Hello and welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. My name is Jason Newland. Not quite sure why I did it so high. Jason Newland. Please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes and I do have a Facebook page devoted to this let me bore you to sleep thing which you can uh, just basically just put in let me bore you to sleep into Facebook and search for it and it will come up and there's a few people have liked the page and are following so you can give you an opportunity to contact me if you wish to do so right what should I talk about today I've been trying to do these uh, sessions daily thing is earlier on I just felt so tired I was too tired to make a sleep session and I was listening to Kiss Dewey which is a radio station it's basically Kiss Radio but it's some of the older dance tunes from probably the, the 90s 2000s and later as well but it's uh, I was just laying back in my big black squeaky chair and oh it was bliss really really nice I was listening to it and I fell asleep and I had a really weird dream but it was just nice you know, and I thought I woke, yeah, I woke up at half, half twelve, twenty past twelve, something like that. And uh, I don't know what time it was that I laid down, not laid down, but laid back in the chair. Must have been for about an hour maybe longer yeah it's nice I'm not laying all the way back now I could still fall asleep so I, I try and keep myself awake and we've all been there haven't we you know when you're trying to keep yourself awake maybe you've been up all night and you've gone to school or work or you're sitting I remember years ago oh, at university trying to sit through a lecture or just trying to keep my eyes open I went to work once after a, it was actually a work do so it was everybody was hung over I think and I went into work and I was wearing sunglasses dark sunglasses pretty much all day and I had my eyes closed I had no idea what I was typing on the screen so I, was, I was asking people questions on the phone and I don't even remember what I was doing. I don't think I sold much that day. I shouldn't have gone into work the next day. It's just hard, you know, if everybody's doing the same thing. And if you do a sickie, people know. Because they're in the same position. 
So yeah, it was, uh, I think I might have had a sausage roll in the morning and lots and lots of water and coffee. So I thought maybe I'll just tell a story. The story of a uh, A man called Bob. And he decided he was in a bath. Yeah, it was in April. Or maybe May. But he was lying in 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 the bath, having a nice soak. Sometimes he'd have a shower, but you know, for today he decided it'd be a nice bath. And he'd just moved away from London. And he was just soaking his balls and because he had some uh, juggling balls that used to get a bit uh, crinkly and flaky so he used to like to soak them in the bath while he had a bath and uh, so he used to do that sometimes he used to, he used to also he was soaking his knob because there was a doorknob that um it had a bit of, I don't know what it was, he wasn't sure what it was that had it on it, because the doorknob could come on and off, it just didn't, it wasn't attached, but the the pole, um, where the doorknob went inside the door, uh, it was quite, went in quite a long way, so it didn't have the like uh, didn't screw so didn't have the, the doorknob didn't screw the knob didn't screw into the door into the hole and he was just sitting there thinking well, maybe it's a bit unhygienic to be having so many different items in his bath while he was there, you know, what if he sat on one by accident? And the last thing he wanted was a knob up his bum. Well, not the last thing, I mean, I imagine, imagine getting the knob and the balls all the way up there. That'd be, how do you explain that? So, and also the hospital that he had was just a little hospital. I say he had, he actually owned a hospital. He, um, it's a long story basically. I, I won't bore you with the whole of the story about how he came to own a hospital, but it started when he was about five and he, he had a very, very, I don't know, it seemed, I suppose, weird to other five-year-olds, but he really liked surgery. Had a real kind of little interest, or well, a big interest in surgical procedures. And he said to his parents, I um, decided I want to be a surgeon. And they were saying, "Oh, that's lovely. I'm gonna go out and play with your with your with your brothers. Go and play uh, swing ball and hit each other with sticks. You know, just normal stuff." Um, and he said, "Well, what do you mean? I understand that bit. Why did you say just normal stuff? Well, you don't seem to really participate in a lot of those things and." 
How come you don't hit anyone, any of your brothers with stinging nettles on their legs? I said, he said, I said, it wasn't me. He, the Bob said, five-year-old Bob said, well, that would be cruel, wouldn't it? Why would I enjoy the suffering of others? And parents, the parents didn't really know sort of how to how to respond. So I said, okay, well, this is about a surgery then. Then his brother came in just as he was about to tell them. His brother said, uh, ha, 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 and then just walked out again. And they all just looked as his brother walked back down the garden they looked through the window obviously they didn't have x-ray vision and uh, trying to figure out what was that all about and it said Bob do you know what that was about and Bob said oh, I know as much as you do I've been here the whole time with you how would I be privy to to things that are happening outside of my awareness I can only tell you what's happening in this room whilst we are communicating. And again, the parents went quiet, not really sure what to say. And Bob said, well, listen here, listen. I've decided I'm going to be a surgeon. And that's it. Okay. Well, you know, that's, that's great. I mean, we all, you know, we all, when we're five, we all like to do things. I personally wanted to be an astronaut, and your mum wanted to be a housewife. So at least one of us got our dream. And uh, Bob's mum looked at Bob's dad and it was a look that Bob had never seen before it was a very distorted facial expression that she presented towards him towards her husband I guess and Bob thought oh Something's going on there. But he decided not to challenge the situation because, first of all, it had no bearance upon the discussion at hand. And secondly, he didn't care. So he said, well, go on, Father. You were talking about uh, accomplishments at a, you know, an L older age or having uh, dreams or ambitions at a you know five years old and this dad said yeah I wanted to be an astronaut he looked at his wife and he just didn't say anything more about her he said and lots of people want to do things when they're five they you know what want to do different things and you know it's it's a long way away before you're old enough to make those decisions for yourself and there's a lot if you want to become a surgeon there's a lot of work involved and uh, Bob said what do you mean he said well if you want to do surgery and be a doctor and do operations you know, it's going to take many, 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 many years. And Bob said, it's not, I'm five. I've got loads of years. And his dad said, yeah, I'm not, not disputing your age. Um, or how long, you know, I don't know how long you're going to live. Bob said, what? He said, I, what, you know, I mean, I'm not being uh, morbid, but, you know, I don't know 
you know, you, I don't know how how long you're going to be around. I don't know. How, you know, no one knows. He said, well, what do you mean? He said, well, everybody, you know, at some point in their life, you know, passes away and hopefully it's a very old age. And Bob said, well, what on earth are you talking about, Father? He said, I'm talking about you know, dying. And he said, Bob said, what? People don't die. Yes, they do, Bob. No, they don't. You're having a laugh. He said, no, no, they do. No. Goldfish die, but people don't. No, 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 they, they, they really do. But how? Oh, I'm not, I can't stand here and tell you every single possible scenario. Well, sit down then. No, what I mean is I'm not, can't go through every single possible uh, reason for someone to become extinct but you know it's just inevitable for all of us he said yeah well, I've got loads of time and I, I don't think it will happen to me somehow I think I'm going to be okay and his dad said yeah alright then okay remembering that he's just five you know and uh, to be fair he was hoping he could Well, break some of the other things, some of the other lies that he had told to him before that one. You know, what's he going to do at Christmas? That's going to be a weird conversation. Anyway, he said to his dad, Bob said, Bob, that's, I'm going to go and become a surgeon. And his dad said, yeah, but it's going to take a long, 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 long time. Why did you say it like that? What do you mean? Why didn't you say it's going to take a long time? Why did you do it in some kind of weird cartoon animation? Long, 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 long time. That's just... It's as if you're making fun of me. No, no, Bob, no, no. I'm not I'm trying to make fun of you. Okay. Well... Anyway, it's not going to take me long. Why is that? Well, I'll just go to a country where you don't need many qualifications to do surgery. Yeah, I mean, there are there are places you go to where you kind of could do surgery without as many strict rules as they have here. But that's what I'm going to do then. Yeah, but don't you want to learn how to do it properly? Ah. What do you mean, ah? Well, properly really is just a word, isn't it? Well, Bob, yeah, properly is a word that has meaning, like, many words uh, what, Bob what do you mean ah uh? I mean ah uh, go on carry on why didn't you say go on then uh, Bob can you stop doing that please uh, I'll tell you, Bob, if you keep at that, uh, the conversation's over, and you're going to be a milkman. What's wrong with being a milkman? Nothing, but it's not being a surgeon, is it? No, Dad, but I think it's a bit wrong of you to 
to be dismissive of someone that delivers milk. It's an important job and it's an important service. What would people have on their breakfast or in their tea or coffee? Well, you can get, you know, milk alternatives, can't you, Bob? Yeah, that's not the point, though, is it? I think it's very callous of you to be so... I don't know, it's a bit bitter towards milkmen. What's a milkman ever done to you? At that point... Bob's mum started laughing and left the room. Bob didn't really understand what was going on there. All he knew is his milkman was always very friendly to him. But, I don't know, Bob just put it down to a fellow ginger-haired person uh, getting on with each other. You know, he had ginger hair, the milkman had ginger hair. And it seemed to be a little bit like bald people sometimes will wink at each other. Um, or, you know, it's just it's just having a commonality, isn't it? That kind of thing. But he thought that the milkman was a great guy. But for some reason, his father didn't. So I don't know what his mum found so funny. That's that's what he thought. I don't know what I don't know what I don't know what she's laughing about. Anyway, he said, "Well, Dad, I'm going to become a surgeon. That's it. You know, I've had enough of this discussion. You've you've dragged it on quite a bit. I mean, unless unless when I walk out of this room." There's like, you know, into the garden is a big, massive uh, party in my name. And that's why you've been, you know, keeping me in the room talking. I'm going to be very disappointed. His dad said, oh, you got me. Oh, you caught me out. Go on in the garden. That's a good boy. So Bob went and he got excited, ran in the garden and... There was nothing in there, just his brothers playing, hitting each other with baseball bats. He looked through the window at his dad, and his dad was laughing as as much as his mum now. Bob then decided, never... Is he ever going to do that to his own child? He's never going to pretend that there's a party in the garden. And then he started thinking, when would a, a, a scenario like that even arise? Then he started thinking to himself, that's not the point. It's about respect. It's about, you know, you need to just, oh, he actually lost the words in his mind. He just couldn't think. He's like, oh, I know what I'll do to get back at him. One day I'm going to have a bath with a knob and some balls. And then he thought, well, how's that going to get back at my dad? He thought, I don't care how it will somehow. I'll take a picture and I'll send it to all his friends at work. That made him chuckle a little bit. So what happened is he decided, you know, he worked hard. He didn't go abroad to do that the way, because he was a bit... Uh, clearly a bit dismissive of the surgical practices of some other countries Um, didn't realise that uh, 
the medical profession is pretty much top notch everywhere. So he just went through the process, but he was a child genius. And you know, he he'd finished university before he was nine and then he went and did the surgery course or whatever you call it, became a doctor. So by the time he was 14, he was a doctor, fully-fledged doctor. And he also really liked jam. It's not necessarily relevant, but to him it was. So yeah, and uh, he built a hospital. Because he was so famous for being, you know, young and amazing he uh, he built this hospital with the finances of uh, an elderly gentleman that who liked his company and the the man financed it all with like millions of pounds or dollars or whatever it was uh, euros and Eventually, the old man um, went away to the farm in the sky and Bob inherited the hospital because it was a private hospital. It wasn't just a, a regular regular hospital, you know, run by the National Health Service or anything. It was private. So, you know, he was very careful who he told about. Didn't let anyone in, just those that he liked. Sometimes he'd stand on the door and... The big metal door with a... with like a, a slit in it. And if anyone knocked, he'd open the slit or the slot or the slit, whatever you want to call it, and say, who is it? A bit like the Wizard of Oz. So, yeah, uh, what do you want? What's the medical emergency? What is it? Uh, no, the wizard's not in. He used to like saying that. And then he could hear them, he closed the the eye slot thing and he could hear them crying. Then he'd say, oh, I'm only kidding, it's not really the Wizard of Oz, it's a hospital. Yeah, of course you can come in. And he'd get off his stool and he'd let them in and, you know, he'd do his magic. Of course he wasn't a wizard, but he was a wizard in the sense of, you know, being a surgical wizard. I mean, the amount of... Uh, practically everybody that came in for the first year of him practicing left without any tonsils or appendix regardless of why they came in oh they've got an ingrown toe now ah oh, doesn't matter because it is in his mind you're better off without those things especially if you ever become a mountaineer so get rid of it now get rid of the stuff you don't need so he was uh he felt it was like emotional baggage, having tonsils and appendix. And he was wrong. But then, as I said, a few years later, he was lying in a bath. And he thought, you know what? I want to join a circus. So he thought, I'm going to have to look into this. And he, you know, people talk about running away to the circus. Well, you don't have to do that if you've got enough money to buy your own circus, which is what he did. He sold the hospital and bought a circus. He bought all brand new material you know, all brand new stuff, like a big tent or the big top. 
they got it made specially um there was a lot of extra expenses it was more expensive than he realized so he, he he didn't i suppose he didn't know how much it was going to cost to set fire to all the other circus's tents um but you know it cost a bit of money but he you know he was really happy but then he was sitting in the porter toilet See, that's Andre sneezing in the background. Shut up, Andre. So he was, um, he had a little office in a porter toilet. It's basically just a portable toilet. And because cause you're travelling with a circus, you can't, you can't have toilets that are connected to the sewage system because that would mean adding thousands of miles worth of pipe while you're travelling. I mean, it's practically impossible. You'd have to travel. You wouldn't be able to travel at any speed, would you? You'd have to keep stopping and starting and adding some more pipe. And Yeah. That wasn't very practical. And... He said to himself, well actually he did have a, uh, a person that worked with him, who was his, his uh, like an assistant, uh, stroke elephant, so it's, and he said, mm, I like this, but I was hoping I'd be a bit more hands-on with the performing because all I'm doing is really just running the thing and keeping the thing afloat financially and doing the accounts and, you know, organising for for other circus uh, performers to disappear and, you know, just general, general stuff. And... I could like quite like to be a performer. That was pretty much my goal when I first decided to join the circus. Which in hindsight probably would have been better if I'd just joined an, a circus that's already up and running and learnt. Maybe gone in for a few days and then learn everything and then after a couple of weeks then took over then I could do everything lion lion taming uh, trampese stilt walking fire eating clowning uh, juggling you know whatever the whole thing and probably mastered that within a few days um, he said what do you think as, as I said, his assistant was an elephant, so he couldn't reply. Right, he said, mm, like that. And uh, I just, I just don't know what to do, he said. I just, it's a bit boring. Especially when there's no competition. And uh, also the fact that Circuses are just really, really, really out of fashion. You know, you can't use live animals really much anymore unless you kind of don't tell anyone. It's just, it's not as exciting as I once thought. Again, the elephant went... Bob looked at the elephant and he prodded and he saw a bit of metal sticking out of the elephant's neck and he pulled on it and the elephant all just crumpled and out ran a little horse. It was a horse inside an elephant costume. 
He said, I thought that sounded like a horse. It didn't sound like an elephant at all. And the horse said, ha, ha, ha. Now I know all your secrets. And Bob said, what? He said, now I know all your secrets. I'm going to tell the world. Tell the world what? You know what. And then Bob started to get worried. Because sometimes he did sleep walk and sleep talk. And the only bit I missed out is he had a relationship with this uh, little horse. And, uh, well, it was the elephant. He thought it was the elephant, but clearly it was the horse. And he'd tell the elephant things. Because he figured the bigger the ears, the better you could keep a secret. And that made <laughs> that made sense to him, and it might have been something that his grandparents told him. But uh, he could only really remember one thing his grandfather ever said, and that was just get out my, get out of my wardrobe, and that that was it. I would always start once I would get was it because it was a bedroom or get out of the ward get out of the wardrobe of the bedroom we're trying to sleep I was like oh, okay always an explorer Bob was always liked to search for things to look and to find to observe to experience. He had a very open mind, which I guess is what allowed him to fall in love with an elephant. And he loved that elephant. He loved it the way that you love a kangaroo. It was that kind of closeness. He had no idea that he was being tricked by a little horse. And he said to the horse, you know what, I've got a question for you. And the horse said, yeah, what? Why are you covered in all that stuff? What's all that stuff that's all over you? And the horse looked at Bob and he said, you know what that is. And Bob started laughing. And then he, then he had a flashback to when the horse just ran out of the elephant's bum. And initially he was annoyed, but then he realised it was quite a funny thing to see. A little horse running out of an elephant's bum. And he started laughing. And he couldn't stop laughing. It was just... It's one of those situations where he didn't want to laugh. But he kept recapping it. Rewinding it back to what made him laugh initially. And it got funnier and funnier. It was very, very strange. And he said to the to the little horse, "Well, what what do you want to what do you want to do now?" Then and the horse said, "Well." I think uh, we should go our separate ways. And Bob said, well, good, I think there should be um, a nice, clean split. Nice and clean. 
And the horse looked at him and he said, Seriously? I think that, that boat sailed, don't you? And Bob started laughing again. Kept thinking of the bum, the elephant's bum and the horse jumping out. It was just... He couldn't get it out of his head. And because obviously it wasn't a real elephant, it was just a, like a big inflatable elephant. Come to think of it, it was made out of the same material as the uh, big top tent. Yeah, it always did like that big top tent. Had a hole at the top. I suppose it's. The big tops, a bit like wigwams, like very, very large wigwams. But instead of sitting in them, keeping warm with your family, you'd be uh, shouting at lions and juggling. Things, I don't know. Some jugglers can juggle all kinds of things. Bob remembers, he recalls, he once saw a juggler juggling chainsaws. And he wanted to put the emphasis on once. But it was definitely interesting while it lasted. So he wasn't quite sure what to do next because... He'd lost his enthusiasm about the circus. And you know, now that he seemed like he'd lost the love of his life as well, and all was left was the, well, it's, I suppose, really, in a sense, uh, it's like losing, having the best night of your life and then never seeing a person again and wanting to, but you don't, and you're just left with a with a filled condom. So I guess that's what he felt like. I suppose that's probably what the horse felt like. But he thought, you know what I'll do? I could perhaps become a police man. Or a woman, depending on how I feel. And he said to the horse, what do you think about that? We could be joining the police force. And the horse said, why are you asking me? You think I care what you do? After what I've been through, what you now think I'm going to give you career advice? No, I wasn't asking for career advice, just a bit of support. Support. Support, you talk about support. Where was my support? Where was my support? When I was inside that elephant. Eh? Where was my support? And Bob said, I I don't know. Don't you have a phone? Have you got any friends? said look yes I do have a phone and Bob said no you do because I could hear it ringing sometimes and the horse said what he said yeah I could hear it ringing I could hear you talking in there in that case you must have known that the elephant wasn't real Bob said no didn't say that I thought maybe he'd eaten a horse but forgot to chew and the horse somehow survived and was calling for an ambulance thought 
that is quite funny that's really silly and the horse started thinking about the idea of being stuck in an elephant's tummy calling for an ambulance and the ambulance saying well where are you well I'm inside an elephant and the ambulance people saying don't waste our time we're not here for for jokes no seriously I'm inside an elephant he uh, ate me but he forgot to chew the ambulance people have probably come out with something like look we all know that elephants don't eat horses they like to eat apples and tree stuff things on trees and hay and apples and they like to drink water but they don't actually you know Bob used to think when he was a kid that the elephant's uh, thingy the elephant's nose uh, the trumpet thing was actually a straw because you'd see on the wildlife programs it sucking water up and then spraying it all over itself and he thought they could why and then he saw it suck it up and then skirt it into its own mouth and Bob thought I wish I could do that and I was like why doesn't he just suck it all up and just drink it why does he suck it up and then spit it back out again into his own mouth it just seemed a bit weird to him spitting in your own mouth seemed a bit weird but then he realised you know as he got older that the trunk isn't it, it's a sucky thing but it doesn't clearly it can't go all the way into the into the uh, the water part of the tummy and he started thinking about how he's missing his his elephant life partner at this point the horse looked at Bob and he said guess what Bob said what he said there's something more that you don't realise he said what's that and he turned around faced the opposite way to Bob pointed his bum towards Bob and a monkey ran out of his bum little monkey and Bob didn't know what to do and the monkey said see it was me all along and the Bob said Dave I can't believe it's you and Dave said yeah I told you I'll get you back he said yeah I know you did but blimey this is pretty sophisticated stuff and Dave said yeah I know but when you got me with that toothbrush you know when I, I knew I had to get you back and I would do whatever it took so the toothbrush story basically is Bob and Dave they worked together at the hospital a while back and Dave was decided to go on holiday 
he was going to go travelling for like six months or something like that and Bob you know it was, it was a big they had a party and stuff to say goodbye because they were close and uh, Bob bought this big like as a present a goodbye present he bought him this big um, backpack and it had everything in it it had everything that he'd need for like basic travel you know the uh, sleeping bag towels soap a water bottle um, Vaseline uh, condoms, tampons, uh, mouse trap, you know, egg, um, like cheese grater, microwave oven, you know, just the basic stuff that was necessary, car battery, and he you know, it was, it was quite an inflatable crocodile, of course, you know, for when he went into the hotel. Well, actually, it wasn't just a hotel um, swimming pools. It was also the, when he went to the Nile, he thought it'd be really funny if he swam, you know, got an inflatable crocodile and just sat on it. And it was fun for a while but then he fell off of it because you know it's it's not um, not the most sturdy they can kind of turn over because it was quite cylindrical so he gets back onto the crocodile and he's like, like it's ridiculous it's a, I, get, oh, I should have got one that was a bit more scaly a bit more you know sort of bit, so it would have sort of stayed afloat stayed up you know so it was a different texture on the top than it was the bottom and he thought yeah a bit like this he realised he was sitting on a real crocodile well luckily that that also fell tipped over as well so he managed to get back onto his other one well, that was a close call and the crocodile said what do you say and Dave said that that Dave the monkey he said that that was a close close call that's all I was saying the crocodile said we well, don't have to be sarcastic so that I wasn't being sarcastic I was just saying that oh, I'm just a bit embarrassed that's all why you're embarrassed that you you crawled onto my back you're embarrassed that you chose me out of all the other crocodiles. What's wrong with me? What have you got a problem with me for? What have I ever done to you? And Dave, Dave the monkey said, no, oh, no, no, no. Oh, come on, come here, come here. And they had a little cuddle. And one thing led to another. And... Uh, Put it this way, there's a new species swimming around in the Nile. Well, sometimes swimming, sometimes swinging from the trees, you know, it depends. So what happened is Dave, when he got back, um, because part of his pack was, you know, the, the gift that Bob gave him, included a camera like one of the old fashioned cameras that has filming that you can get developed in a shop this is a while back I don't know if they still have them anymore so it wasn't digital or anything and uh, so he came back he developed the pictures and he looked through them and he didn't realise that a couple of the pictures had already been took before he left. And that was a picture of Bob with a toothbrush 
that he gave to Dave to take with him and a toothbrush was up his bum and Bob was looking back smiling pointing to a toothbrush so Dave had spent the last six months using a toothbrush that had been up Bob's bum now Bob wasn't very happy about that I mean of course he had the romance the holiday romance and you know uh, a new family to show for it but he still just you know he couldn't let it go so he decided he was gonna get his own back eventually so that's that's when he decided to hatch this plan to you know get back at at Bob and it was actually uh, Dave's advice and support and encouragement that led to Bob's you know getting rid of the hospital and investing in a circus and that's when Dave went through the transformation and you know managed to get himself implanted inside a little horse and then got that horse implanted inside an elephant and uh, it was a very complicated process in fact it was quite an uncomfortable three years but it was worth it just to see the look on Bob's face because he was already he was already looking because before he popped out of the uh, little horse's bum he was looking through there he was looking he could see it and he was giggling Dave was giggling to himself I can't wait for this plus I'm going to be able to breathe properly again so that's a, a bonus and he popped out and he just the look on Bob's face was worth every bit of that whatever it was he went through he didn't even have a word for it it was worth it and now he could get back to his family he could go and visit his you know go and see his kids and couldn't wait to get back and cuddle up to his crocodile lover And Bob was just speechless. It's just like, what, what? What was this all about? And Dave said, you know what it was about. And he said, well, you said it was about the toothbrush. Yeah. But this is a lot of work that you put into this I mean all I did was spend five minutes taking pictures of myself um, you know with the toothbrush okay it was a couple of hours but I only took pictures before you know before I kind of got started but to be fair I had five toothbrushes I got through all of them apart from the last one so yeah it was the you got you got lucky really how do you how do you figure that out well you got the toothbrush it had only been up there for a couple of minutes if the first one hadn't have broke you'd have got one that had been up there for two hours <sighs> And Dave said, you know what, Bob? I don't think that this story is appropriate. Bob said, yeah, I'm not sure it is either. And Dave said, why? 
why would you tell this kind of story like this whole elephant little dog monkey crocodile just this whole thing why would you why why would you tell this story and Bob said I don't know I didn't plan to it just happened I really don't know where it came from or what to do with it and they said yeah but this is supposed to be a sleep session what you know it's, what the heck Bob said yeah but hopefully they're falling, <laughs> they're falling to sleep yeah but what if they're dreaming <laughs> what if they're dreaming about monkeys jumping out of horses bums and stuff he said no they won't be it's about sleeping not about dreaming Mind you, yeah, that's a point. Oh well. It's all meant in good fun. They said, you know what though, Bob? Here's a bit of advice. What's that? Well, if you're going to do something, to humiliate somebody then my advice is do something that they've never done themselves so what do you mean Dave looked him in the eyes he said I always put my toothbrush up my bum every day And then both Dave and Bob did a little bow to uh, let everybody know that that was the end of the extremely healthy story. So that's the end of this Let Me Boy to Sleep recording. And I will see you tomorrow with something different. Bye.